Welcome back to Don God Rob Month, fellow followers of Hope and Despair. I hope you got you guys seem to really enjoy first week of Don God Rob Month with the ranking of the uh, Trigger Happy Habit cast, and it is time now to rank the Don God Rob Two Goodbye Despair cast. This one should be a lot more fun because Don God Rob Goodbye Despair happens to be my second favorite game in the franchise, and the cast happens to be my second favorite cast. Uh, I absolutely love this game for a number of reasons. You know, a couple of reasons right off the bat. I really do think a lot of these characters are just inherent more interesting and you get a lot more development and a lot more time to really fall in love with them and like them a lot more. Um, also, this game has Nagito in it, so there's that as well, but uh, we're going to get into this. We're not going to waste any time whatsoever. Uh, I will say this though, I'm very much looking forward when Decadence comes out to replaying all three of these games because I'm really curious if what my favorite Danganronpa, uh, the order, my ranking of the Danganronpa games would stay the same after a, uh, after a replay. Cause right now, my favorite game is Danganronpa V3, and my least favorite game would be Trigger Happy Havoc with Goodbye Despair right in the middle, which is a, uh, the, all, I think all three of the games are S tier 100%, but that's how I would rank them personally. But I'm really curious once Decadence comes out to see if maybe after replaying all three of them, something's changed. I don't know. We'll have to find out. I'm totally open to that changing because I will say this little teaser for uh, the V3 ranking, I fucking hate the ending of V3, but uh, not a controversial opinion at all. Let's get into this. This is my ranking of every single one of the Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair Cat. AKA the remnants of despair. Let's get into this. Alrighty, so first up is Hajime Hinata, and I'm gonna do something a little different in this video. In the Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc cast ranking, I did rank Toko Fukawa and Genocide Jack as one character, but I'm actually going to split Hajime and Izuru Kamakura separately, because in my opinion, they are two completely different characters, and there is really no reason to rank them as one character, in my opinion. I really feel like Toko Fukawa and Genocide Jack should be ranked as one character, but Hajime Hinata and Izuru Kamakura, I really feel should be ranked as individual characters. So, we are going to rank Hajime separately. So, Hajime Hinata, the ultimate reserve course student, or just the reserve course student. Very boring character, just like Makoto, but I do think he's a little more likable than Makoto because he does have a lot more development than Makoto. The whole thing in Chapter 6 where it's revealed that he was Izuru Kamakura in the, uh, back when they were in the Remnants of Despair, how he kind of gave his body to become the, uh, to become Izuru Kamakura, become the ultimate hope. Very interesting story and something that definitely, that definitely outshines Makoto's development in Trigger Happy Havoc. So, while Hajime Anata is definitely a, a, a step up from Makoto Nayagi, and I did think that the entire time I was playing Goodbye Despair. Once again, just like Makoto, he is not a standout character in this game for me. Uh, he was not a character I particularly cared about all that much. I do like the development with him. It is very interesting and definitely a lot more interesting than Makoto's development because actually stuff actually happens with him. But other than that, he is very boring, and I have to say, man, Hajime Hinata has the single most generic and boring design of this entire franchise, dude. I look at him, and I see absolutely nothing spectacular whatsoever, and yes, that is the point. He is the, he is the reserve, he is the reserve course student. He shouldn't look extravagant or anything, and I do think the character is likable overall. So, let's go ahead and lean into the ranking now for Hajime Hinata. So, I like him more than Makoto, so I'm gonna give him a higher grade than Makoto, but not by much because I still think he's a pretty weak character in the franchise, especially compared to the final protagonist who we will be ranking next week. So, Hajime Anata, since I gave Makoto a B tier in the Trigger Happy Havoc uh, ranking, I'm going to go ahead and give Hajime a B plus tier because I really do think he is a step up from from uh, Makoto in a, in a number of ways, but still just not my favorite character and not the most interesting character overall. So, But once again, I am really curious once I replay Goodbye Despair, once uh, Deck comes out. I'm curious if I will grow a better relationship with Hajime because right now he is probably in like the bottom row of like well not the bottom row he he's he's a fine character just not the most interesting character and I don't think that's a very controversial statement to say so Hajime Hinata is gonna get a B plus alrighty but from here on out I love just about every single one of the characters in this game I I really think a lot of them I really think the characters in this game all have uh, very redeemable qualities that are very very fun and no hate towards Hajime he's a fine character he's a good person uh, he does have some pretty good moments but overall just not the most interesting character so. Let's move on before I keep repeating myself. Chiaki Nanami, the ultimate gamer. Dude, I love Chiaki as much as the next guy. Chiaki is so awesome, so sweet. I love her constant falling asleep when you're talking to her and her obsession with video games and... 
the absolute saddest thing about Chiaki, I mean, if we're talking canon, if we're talking canon with, no, nah, with Danganronpa 3, the end of Hope Speak High, technically, Chiaki is the only person who, sur is the only person who died in, uh, in Goodbye Despair, um, because all of the other characters are brought back and resurrected in, uh, Dang in Danganronpa 3, although I really do choose to omit the ending of Danganronpa 3, the anime. We have, I might make a separate video on that one day, talking about the faults of the Danganronpa 3 anime because if we go by that we go by the technical canon Chiaki is the only character that dies in this entire game and uh, that is so sad because Chiaki is such a wonderful character and the scene in the despair arc when Junko executes her is genuinely one of the saddest pieces of animation I have ever seen in my life I genuinely cried the first time I saw that scene it was so heartbreaking and it was so hard to watch man that was one of those scenes that I genuinely was having a hard time looking at the screen like I'm watching ReZero right now and I just finished episode 15 and that was another moment while I, like at the end of uh, of um, you, you know what part if you're a ReZero fan uh, I was like like trying to look away from the TV but I couldn't and it's just like that for Chiaki um, it, it, it really is a heartbreaking scene and I love Chiaki so much as a character uh, her execution is also very is pretty cool I gotta say one thing I will say about Goodbye Despair, the executions take a step down for me in this game. There's a, quite a few executions in this game that I really don't care for all that much. Um, Chiaki's is not one of them, though. I do like Chiaki's a lot. I like how it fits with her, with her, um her gamer thing and uh, the way she goes out as well is pretty damn incredible the whole thing with Nagito which we will talk about when we get to Mr. Nagito but I love Chiaki uh she is definitely the the like the 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 Kyoko of this game the really like the main character who's like the side to the side of the main character you know you got Yahajime and then you got Chiaki um I love her to death I'm gonna go ahead and give Chiaki an S tier I, I really do think she deserves it she's such a great character and I love her, so Chiaki is an S tier. Alrighty, my hero, uh, my hero, I forgot her last name, I genuinely did. My hero, the ultimate, uh, photographer. Uh, I forgot her last name pretty, I, I think it's pretty obvious why I forgot her last name. We very, we get very little time with this character, and honestly, there's nothing remarkable about this character. She seems like a bit of a feminist, but she gets absolutely blown away by the feminist from V3, so, you know, you know who we're talking about, uh, freaking Tenko. Um, so yeah, at that point, she's a feminist, and she's weaker than the other feminist feminist in the in the franchise so I don't know she's just not that remarkable of a character she's got a boring design doesn't really do much in the story the whole thing with her like being like Hyoko's only friend and kind of changing Hyoko for the better is okay but it doesn't go anywhere and Hyoko's still a bitch by the time she dies or dies um so yeah there's that but overall my, my hero she really doesn't do much you know there is the whole thing with her in Fuyuhiko and uh Peko in chapter two it is good but this is yet another character in this in this one that I really just don't have that many that big of an opinion on she's a very forgettable character she's like the Sayaka of this game where she's there for a little bit and then she's just gone and you kind of just after a while forget that she was ever even a character and then when you like when you when you go back and you revisit you're like oh I forgot completely about that chick yeah I forgot about her uh like because chapter two is so great because of the trial and because of the blackened and the whole thing with Fuyuhiko and Peko, but uh, you almost completely forget what who the fucking victim was in that because my hero was such a forgettable character. That's just me. I'm sure she has some fans out there and I don't mean to mean any ill will towards her. Actually, when I was playing Danganronpa 2, I did like the character for the short time that she was there, but she is pretty forgettable in the grand scheme of things, especially compared to the rest of the amazing cast of this game, so I'm gonna have to give my hero, just for being a pretty forgettable character overall, I'm gonna give my hero we're gonna go with a a b tier on her she's uh yeah she's just a kind of a forgettable character in my opinion and i don't think many people are really gonna i don't think many people are gonna are gonna be up in arms about that one so my hero is a b tier but from we go from one of the most boring characters in the entire franchise to one of the absolute highlight characters of Rabba in general not just goodbye to spare gundam tanaka the ultimate animal breeder dude I love fucking Gundam so much. Everybody loves Gundam. Gundam is such a fucking badass, dude. I love this character so much. He has such an awesome design. I will say this, though. I will say this. I'll go on record right now. I like his uh, design in the Despair arc more than the Goodbye to, uh, more than the uh, Danganronpa 2 design. I honestly th liked his, uh, his, um, his Despair arc design more. We had the, where his hair wasn't up like that, and he had his hair just kind of down like that. I prefer that design, but I love Gundam, dude. This guy is such an awesome character, because, like, he always 
you, you always, he's always telling you like, I am evil and I will destroy everything and bring hellfire upon the world. And you're just like, this guy is so wonderful with his fucking hamsters and his dark devas of destruction, which are the same thing, but still. Uh, I, I love him so much. Like, who on earth could play Danganronpa 2 and not love Gundam Tanaka? And by far, the absolute best thing about Gundam Tanaka, in my opinion, is Gundam is the one blackened in this entire franchise who genuinely earned his kill. He was not like every other black like every other black into this franchise who went for a stealth kill or something like that or just tried to go for the best way to get away with it. Gundam earned his fucking kill. They were stuck in that damn funhouse, which I have to say, I'm not a fan of that funhouse shit, dude. That was so annoying in uh in chapter four. But uh they're they're stuck in there and they're starving to death and they have to get out. So what do they do? Gundam challenges and Nekomaru to a battle, a fight to the death to see who would come out on top. And I love that so much, dude. It, it was it was absolutely incredible. And I really do believe wholeheartedly that Gundam Tanaka is the one black in this entire franchise that genuinely earned his kill. I really, really love him. He's such an awesome character, man. Like, what more can be said about Gundam that hasn't been said a million times? I love him so much. Gundam Tanaka gets an S tier. 100%. He's got a great execution as well. He's such a likable and lovable character. I love his laugh. <laughs> so fucking wonderful. I love Gundam so much. S tier for Gundam. Oh, I didn't even realize who was next. We go from one of the best characters in the entire franchise to the goddamn worst character ever. Akane Awari. Fucking the ultimate gymnast, I think. Oh my lord, I hate Akane so much. Like, I hate this character. And the reason why should be very obvious, this character does fucking nothing. She stands there and eats food and fucking jumps in the way and causes Monokuma to freak out and almost kills Nekomaru Nidai and she does nothing. She grows no, she grows no intelligence. She grows no character development. She is just there to stand there and have big titties and say a bunch of stupid shit that means absolutely nothing and be even more useless than Yasuhiro somehow. I hate her. I hate her so much. I hate her so much. I cannot stress enough. I hate Akane. She gets an F. Akane is the first character of this series to get an F tier. I hate her. I genuinely hate her. She is so annoying and so useless. I couldn't, I would not shed a tear if they had killed her and they didn't kill her. Somehow she survived the entire game. I don't even understand how at all, why on earth they let her survive over fucking Gundam or Mekon. Mekon. Mekon should have survived in place of Akane. We'll get to Mekon. If you can't tell, I am a huge Mekon fan, but seriously, I hate Akane. I hate her so much. She's so useless, and her surviving spot could have easily been someone so much better. They could have killed Akane in, in Chapter 3. Akane could have been the Blackened in Chapter 3, and Mekon could have survived. It honestly probably would have made more sense for Chapter 3. I hate Akane. I hate her. I, I, she, I think she has absolutely zero redeeming qualities. She doesn't even build a relationship with anybody. You could say the Nekomar or Nidai relationship, but fuck that. She nearly gets him killed. I hate Akane. F tier. Oh, I'm moving on before I just start b fucking bursting with rage, even though I kind of already am. <laughs> Alrighty. So, from the worst character in the entire franchise, easily in my opinion, we go to my favorite character of the entire game. Mikan Sumiki, the ultimate nurse. Dude... I love Mikan so much. I love Mikan so much. She is so sweet and so lovable and I love every second she's on screen. I love her design so much. I love Mikan. I have genuinely zero words to describe how much I love Mikan. She is in my top five favorite characters of the entire, uh, of the entire franchise. I love her so unbelievably much. There is one negative with Mikan, and that is the entirety of Chapter 3. I hate Chapter 3 of Danganronpa 2, just like everybody else. Every Danganronpa fan and their mother hates Chapter 3 of Danganronpa 2, and I 100% agree. I think it's the worst chapter by far. I hate it. I don't think anything makes sense. I hate, I think both of the kill, both of the victims suck. I think the villain, I think the black and suck. I don't mean, I don't mean they suck as in their bad characters. I mean the decision for the victims and the blackened suck. They they're, they're really made no sense whatsoever. And uh, Mikon is one of those reasons. And then to cap it off, she has the absolute worst execution of the entire franchise. I hate Mikon's execution with a burning passion. I think it is so stupid. I hate every second of it. Every time I have to watch it, I look away from the screen or I just skip past it or I mute the TV. I hate it so much. In my mind, I completely forget that that execution is even a thing because I hate it so much. But besides the fact that chapter three sucks, 
Mikon is such a wonderful character, and I absolutely love in the Danganronpa 3 anime that scene when uh, Nagito finally meets Makoto, and Mikon's like, So yeah, Mikon, hands down, no questions asked, Mikon gets an S tier. One of my favorite characters in the entire franchise, and a character that I love to death. If we ever, if Figma ever makes some Danganronpa characters, and I do mean Figma, I want some Figma Danganronpa characters, uh, please God, do Mikon. I know she's not a, like the most popular character in the world, you probably want to do Junko, and Kyoko, and Nagito, and Kokichi first, but I hope Mikon will come eventually, because I love her so much. Mikon is an S tier. Alrighty, and they don't slow down, man. Fuyuhiko Kuzurio, probably the absolute single, the single character in this franchise that gets the biggest redemption arc. This guy was the fucking worst for the first chapter of this game. He sucked so much, and I don't think anybody will disagree with that. Fuyuhiko sucks so much in the first chapter of this. Every time you see him, all he does is tell you to fuck off. Fuck you, he's ten times worse than Byakuya, than the, than, uh, chap than the first three chapters of uh, Byakuya's story. Seriously, Fuyuhiko sucks for the first uh, for the first chapter of this game. And honestly, I after watching the Despair arc, you're kind of confused because in the Despair arc, he doesn't really feel like the Fuyuhiko you get at the beginning of Goodbye Despair. He feels like the later Fuyuhiko. He feels like the nice stand-up Fuyuhiko who you get after chap after the events of chapter 2, which we'll talk about in just a second here, but I hate him at first, but man, Fuyuhiko has the absolute biggest redemption arc in this entire franchise. It cannot be understated. He becomes such a great character. After chapter 2, after he jumps in front of uh, fucking Peko's execution and nearly gets himself killed, he gets, a, he's, he gets this completely new outlook on life, and he just becomes such a likable character, and they don't, they don't do it wrong. They don't just, like, they don't just, like, make him start, start making him just randomly do a bunch of nice stuff and, and have him, like, uh, like, forcibly become a better character so you just think he's a better character. No. Every fiber of your being, every cell in your body fully believes that Fuyuhiko has changed. He is now a better character. He's like Vince Blake in, uh, season four of Zoe 101. If you're a Zoe 101 fan, Vince Blake is a character in season three that fucking sucks. He absolutely sucks. And then he comes back in in season four. It's one of my, it's actually one of the best things about Zoe 101 in my opinion. I love Zoe 101. Just gonna throw that out there. Um, and he comes back in season four and you think he's just gonna be like, it's just, it's just gonna be an episode where he's a dick. He comes back to be a dick again and then he's gone for the rest of the show again. But no, he comes back in season four and he's a genuinely changed person. It's the same thing with Fuyuhiko and I, I love him. I love him. And come on, Derek Steven Prince, dude. Every time you get to hear Derek Steven Prince's voice, it's a huge highlight. I love him. I love Fuyuhiko. I think he's so damn awesome, and I could never in a million years give him anything less than an S tier. He's such a great character, man. I love Fuyuhiko. So yes, S tier for Fuyuhiko for having the single best redemption arc in the entire franchise by far, and he he is one of the characters that lives in this game that 100% deserved to live. I love Fuyuhiko, so S tier for him. Alrighty, Kazuichi Soda, the ultimate mechanic, or the ultimate simp, as I like to call him, um, one of my least and lesser favorite characters of, uh, of Danganronpa 2, he's, he's one of the survivors that I don't have a problem with him surviving, but I feel like there might have been another way to, to go with Kazuichi's fate, like, I don't know, I feel like maybe they could have come up with something a little bit better, because in the end, he really doesn't feel like he really did anything, he did, he, he doesn't really feel like he did much, and, but not like to the same level as Akane and, um, and Yasuhiro, he actually, he feels like he did do some things, but overall it does feel like his, his survivor spot in the end was a little bit unearned I will say but overall I do like Kazuichi and the fact that his design is literally just like ripped right off of that dude off, off, off of that freaking famous vine guy you know which one I'm talking about it's literally like like picture for picture that guy in in an animated form and um I absolutely love him unless was it mate wait hang on didn't talk about but two come out in like 2012 and then didn't Vine come out in like 2016? So, oh my god, was he actually caught? Was it the other way around? Am I forgetting? Am I actually just now realizing this? Was it actually the other way around and that guy was actually being Kazuichi Soda? I don't know. <laughs> it, it, there's too much of a, of a, you know what I'm talking about, man. This is a widely sp spread Danganronpa meme. So, I don't know. I might be wrong, but I think actually, I think actually Danganronpa 2 came out before Vine, so I don't know. Um, but Kazuichi, uh, a good character, I like his, I, I kind of like the whole thing with him. He loves Sonya, but Sonya will never, like, return his love, and she always blows him off, and I, I don't know, he, he's a fun character, not one of the more memorable characters of, of Goodbye Despair, but a fun character nonetheless. He's got a good design, a good personality. 
I like him. We'll give Kazuichi. I think I've. I I will go ahead and give Kazuichi a B tier. I think he's a pretty good character, and I am so so thirsty. I need a drink. <laughs> Comment below if you love Dr Pepper. <sighs> Not sponsored. I just I love Dr Pepper. Hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Woo! We're good now. Let's get going. <laughs> All right, we're about halfway through this, so yeah, and we still have to talk about, like, uh, very, 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 uh, big characters, so let's get into this. All right, Sonya Nevermind, the ultimate princess. Um, another character that I really feel like doesn't really deserve to be a survivor in this game. Like, I would have taken Mikon over Sonya any day. Uh, not a bad character. I like her design. I like her whole thing where she's, like, obsessed with serial killers. It's a fun little thing to throw in there for such a graceful character, the whole obsession with serial killers. And it kind of works in the story of the first game with Genocide Jack as well, so I kind of like that as well. Um, uh, she's got a good design. She has some pretty funny moments also. Uh, I do qu I do quite like when she kind of, uh, like, oh no, the cameras were watching me! Oh, I did some seriously disgraceful things in front of those cameras. Like, she can be a pretty funny character, but overall... Just not one of my favorite Danganronpa 2 characters, um, but still a good character nonetheless, you know. Just, uh, one of the lesser ones in my opinion, I would say. Like, this game has some seriously highlight characters like Gundam and Fuyuhiko, and then they have some pretty weak characters like Sonya and Akane. So, yeah. Uh, I don't really have much, many thoughts on Sonya. She's a likable character. Definitely not a character that you, like, when she pops up on screen, you're not like, uh, with this bitch. No, 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 no. She's not like that. But... Just, I, I've never met anybody whose favorite character was Sonya Nevermind. I'm just gonna throw that out there. So, Sonya, let's give her a B tier. I think a B tier suits her pretty well. Yeah, B tier for Sonya. Alrighty, Nekomaru Nidai. Another character that I honestly don't love all that much. Like, I'm just not, I'm realizing while doing this that I don't love a ton of the characters from Goodbye Despair. Like, I don't love every single one of them, but there's a couple that I just absolutely adore. Like, looking at this, we have B plus and then S, S. We have, like, four S's right here. The, there was only, like, three S's in the Trigger Happy Havoc cast as a whole. And I can already, t and I can tell you, I'll tell you straight up, there's at least two more characters in here that are getting at an S tier. So, um, yeah, but... I just like a lot more of these characters, like, more overall than the grand scheme of things, but... Nekomaru is not a bad character, um, I don't love the twist with him in chapter 4 where after, after Akane fucking almost gets him killed and then he gets, uh, turned into a robot, I don't know, it's not my favorite part of the whole show, it was honestly a little bit goofy, I mean the game, uh, it was honestly a little bit goofy, but it's not horrible, I don't hate it, um, but a, a fun character, the, the memes are pretty funny, you know what memes I'm talking about, I don't need to go in depth to it, but you know which ones, they're pretty funny, he's got some pretty funny moments in the despair arc as well, his introduction in the Despair arc is probably one of my absolute favorites. It's really fucking funny. Uh, I love it. Honestly, I love it. It's really good. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and give Nekomaru Nidai a, uh, a B plus. B plus. He's a good character. Got a good design. And I almost forgot to say that uh, he was voiced by Patrick Seitz. So that is always a huge plus when you get to hear Patrick Seitz's voice. So yeah, Nekomaru Nidai, B plus for me. Alrighty. Hiyoko Sionji, the ultimate traditional dancer, or you could say the ultimate soon-to-be serial killer freaking psychopath. I hate Hyoko. I hate her so much. I hate her so fucking much. Um, she has some fun moments in the Danganronpa 3 anime. I do think she has a couple of fun moments, but... Besides that, she is such a bitch, just constantly bullying Mikon at every second during the trials, having such an unlikable personality. You, I get to squish the ants, squish, 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 I'm gonna kill all the animals, like... This character was so annoying. I hated her. I was very happy when she died in Chapter 3, but I also feel like they were kind of, like, starting to make her not hateable, but then they just killed her off, so... I don't know. Another character that I think her fate was a little mishandled, but overall... Hyoko sucks. I cannot say that enough. I hate this character. She is easily one of the most hated characters in this entire franchise, so this will not be a controversial one, but I don't like her either. I'm giving her a D tier. She's not an F tier like Akane, because at least she does do some shit. Doesn't just fucking stand there and say a bunch of stupid shit and do absolutely nothing and then survive the game for some reason. Uh, at least she has the, at least she has the decency to die. <laughs> At least she has the decency to die. Never thought I'd say that before. Alrighty, Hiyoko, D tier. Alrighty, Ibuki Miyota. Oh man, I love Ibuki so much. You guys know I'm a metalhead, so how could I not love Ibuki? But she's just so damn likable, so lovable. I absolutely love every second she's on screen in the Despair arc. She really is a, a serious highlight of the Despair arc. I really love it. Um, 
I don't know, man, Ibuki is just such a great character. We don't get a ton of time with her. She's so fun though, as she's always talking in the third person and she's always doing her pointing. Yeah, I, I love I love her overall. She's got some great sprites too. I love the one with the super long Pinocchio nose. I, I love this character. She even makes a corn reference, and I'm a huge corn fan, so that's pretty fun. If you do her free time events, she makes a corn reference in one of them. So that was really fun. Um, I love Ibuki. I, I really do. She is one of my favorite characters of this game by far. It's I honestly think that she is another character that really should have survived to the end to the end of the game. She should not have died in chapter three. I don't know, man. Chapter three just sucks. Like, what more can I say? Like, I, I I'm realizing while I'm doing this that I'm really talking a lot of shit on Goodbye Despair, but it's all because of chapter three, dude. Chapter three just sucks so much, man. Ah, uh, man. I, I have to be honest. Like, Dying in Rumba two, chapter three is my least favorite chapter of the entire franchise. Like, I cannot stress that enough. I hate everything about it. I hate everything about it. Like, usually, even if I don't really enjoy a chapter. It, I, at least cap off with a cool execution, but this chapter doesn't even do that. The execution in this chapter sucks ass, so... Yeah, I don't know. Ibuki, I'm gonna give her an S tier, 100%. I love this character so much. I would, I would absolutely love to see some more of her. Maybe we'll, maybe I'll get to uh, use her a little bit in the uh, in Danganronpa S. We will get to see more of her in there. Although once again, I have absolutely no idea what to expect from Danganronpa S. But yeah, S tier for Ibuki. Alrighty, Teru Teru Hanamura. So. Teru Teru, obviously not a likable character at all. He's super, super weird. He's so pervy. He's ten times more pervy than Hifumi. So, overall, I don't like this character. But I will say, there is some things about this character that I find hilarious. Mainly, in Chapter 1, when he's, when you start leading on, when, when you start figuring it out that he is the Blacken. And he, you know what I'm talking about. When he starts getting that weird-ass accent, he just starts talking like that. It's one of the absolute funniest moments of the entire franchise. Like, it genuinely had me on the fucking floor. It was so damn funny. And how nobody can even understand what he's saying, so Monami has to translate everything. I don't even say it anymore. I'm telling you, I was in that damn dining hall doing the blackout. Where are you from again? I was born in West Arthur, who were raised in South Iowa. He's also got a pretty sweet execution, I must say. Uh, he probably has my favorite execution of Danganronpa 2, to be honest. I really do like his. Uh, it's very over-the-top and very cool. And the last thing I like about him is he screams Avril Lavigne at the top of his lungs, which is another moment of this franchise that I absolutely laughed out loud. And, uh, yeah, almost passed out. It was so damn funny. And I'm also a huge Avril Lavigne fan, so that is uh, pretty funny as well. So, Teru Teru. He's not a likable character, but he lends to some pretty damn hilarious moments, even in the Despair arc as well, I think he's got some pretty funny moments. So, not a likable character, but because of how many times he made me laugh, I don't hate him nearly as much as I did Hifumi. I'll go ahead and give Teru Terra a C+, just for having some really funny laugh out loud moments. So yeah, C+, for Teru Teru. Alright, Peko, Peko Yama, the ultimate swordswoman. We don't get a ton of time with Peko, we only really know that she, we only really learn that Peko is the, is, um, is, I, I don't want to say tool, but that, you know, that's what she thinks she is to Fuyuhiko. She's like his bodyguard, his, uh, his tool, you know, as she would easily say. Um... But overall, you don't really get a ton of time with her. She's got some pretty cool. She's got a great design. I do like her execution. It is a. It is a pretty cool one in the uh, in the game. Um, and she does have some pretty great moments. And obviously, chapter two is amazing. Like I love chapter two of Goodbye Despair so fucking much. It's so unbelievably good. And uh, very difficult job. Very difficult trial to figure out. That one definitely took me a couple hours. Uh, definitely did. I I was not on. To, I was not uh, thinking it was her for a while there. But um, I do like Peko a lot. I think she's a cool character. She's got a good design. I love her relationship with Fuyuhiko, um, but overall, you know, one of those, just like Chihiro, like, she's a good character, but you don't get a ton of time with her, so there's not really much to really remember about her, not really much to really latch on about her, but, um, still a fun character overall, and I'll go ahead and give Peko Peko Yama a... Let's go with a beats here for Peko Peko Yama. She is a pretty darn good character. I do like her. She got, once again, she got a really memorable design. And the whole thing with her, I almost forgot. The whole thing with her in the Shining Justice thing or the Sparkling Justice thing, that was stupid, okay? That was stupid. You know what? Just for that, because I totally forgot about that, I'm bumming her down to a B minus, because that was stupid, and in the end, it lends it to absolutely nothing. They just threw it in there to make the trial longer, and that trial did not need to be longer. It was already plenty long, Spike Shut and Soft. So yeah, uh, Peko Peko Yama, just for that freaking Sparkling Justice BS, I'm it, I'm bumming her down to a B minus because man that sucked. <laughs> that genuinely sucked. That was so pointless. So yeah, uh, B minus for Pegoyama, just because she's another one of those characters that we just don't get a ton of time with, um, and that whole sparkling justice thing was fucking pointless, and only served to make that trial more complicated and longer than it already was, which it did not need to be. That trial was plenty long as it was. Ah, B minus. Alrighty. 
Nagito Komaeda, for all intents and purposes, the main villain of Danganronpa 2. Dude, I love Nagito, you love Nagito, we all love Nagito. Like, what more can be said about Nagito other than he is so fucking awesome? Like, every but Nagito is one of the single most unique anime characters I have ever seen. He is- I have never seen any character even remotely similar to Nagito. He's just, he's so unique, dude. Everything about him, every second Nagito's on screen after the twist of Trial 1, you're just like, what the fuck is going on with this character? You're so confused, and he's this ticking time bomb. And you're wondering, like, what on earth is gonna happen? What is gonna happen with that guy? And my god, when that bomb explodes in Chapter 5, woof! Oh boy, uh, we'll talk about that in a second here, because Nagito is gonna get quite a bit of time in this video. Um... Dude, this character, he's easily one of the highlight characters of Danganronpa. Like, if I were to pick the three most essential Danganronpa characters, Nagido would definitely be in there, man. He is so memorable and so awesome and just so unique overall. Everything about him, like, the first time you see him, he's so nice. And, you know, throughout Chapter 1, you think he's just going to be some normal best friend character. You're just like, yeah, this guy is cool, you know? I don't have much of an opinion on him. And then you get to Chapter 1, you get to the first trial of Chapter 1, and shit just falls apart. And this character goes in the entire other direction than you ever thought he was. Like, when I was about to, like, when I was getting ready to play Danganronpa 2, I was obviously obsessed with Danganronpa from playing the first game and watching the anime, like, 15 times. Um, I was obsessed with it, and I kept seeing Nagito everywhere, and people constantly talking about Nagito, and every time people would start talking about him, I would get rid of it, because I was fully intending on play playing the video game. And, you know, when you start him off, when you start the game off, you're just like, okay, he's, a, he's just the best friend character, whatever. And then you get to try a one, and he just completely changes into an entirely different character than what you originally thought he was and it's absolutely brilliant like he's such a unique character and throughout the entire game he is this ticking time bomb and you're just wondering when the fuck he's gonna go off and then you get to chapter 5 and Nagito's plan in chapter 5 is the absolute most mind-blowing freaking uh, moment of this entire show like this entire franchise of this entire game uh, I, it's so absurd and so ridiculous, and I love every second of it. I love every fucking second of Nagito's plan in Chapter 5 of Danganronpa Goodbye Despair. Like, I, what, 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 what more do I even need to say about it? It's such a ridiculous plan. Like, the whole thing with the fire grenades and him being the lucky, the ultimate lucky student and making and getting, uh, Chiaki to get to, to pick the fire grenade so that he can get everybody executed except Chiaki, and then they start to unravel it and they figure it out and they just kind of go along with it. Absolutely brilliant, man. Every second of his plan is so brilliant. Every aspect of it is so fucking wild. Like, the whole time I was playing Chapter 5, it took a good five hours or so for me to figure that shit out, dude. It was so damn long and so convoluted and ridiculous, and I loved every second of it, dude. It was not like the sparkling justice thing in Chapter 2. I loved every second of- I loved every second of, uh, Trial 5 of Danganronpa 2, man. It was so incredible, and Nagicho is just such an awesome character. And even, like, even when he's not being, like, his super, like, even when Nagito is not being his, his villainous, like, super, like, I'm gonna fucking get everybody killed, he's still so awesome. Like, there's that scene, there's that scene in the, in, uh, in the future arc when he shows up at the end, uh, once, you know, all the, once the remnants of despair all show up at the end, and he's on that mountain, and there's all the guards below, and he just kicks one little pebble, and it falls, and it hits another rock, and then that rock falls, and hits a bigger rock, which falls, and then hits another rock, which causes an avalanche, that kills every single one of the guards like the whole thing with him being the ultimate lucky student and actually being lucky You know, you know, he gets in a plane crash and he's the only one that survives He plays Russian roulette with a six with uh, five bullets in the gun and he lives like he is such a unique character man I love him. It's almost like it's almost like Damien from the omen. He's untouchable, dude You can't touch him because no matter what he'll just be walking around, you know, minding his own business talking about his hope nonsense and then you'll like come at him with a knife and fucking uh, you get struck by a meter or something like he's so awesome i love everything about nagito dude i love him so much he's so damn awesome like what I, I i got nothing more i got nothing more to say i'm just gonna be repeating myself if i keep going man this video's gotta end someday but i can keep going on and on about nagito but he's such a fucking awesome character nagito gets an s plus no questions asked no way in hell i could not give nagito an s plus he is he is one of the quintessential Danganronpa characters.
Alrighty, Yusami slash Monami, or I guess we could say Gekko Gekko Haro from the, uh, from, uh, from the Dying Rapper 3 anime. One of the few things that the Dying Rapper 3 anime added to the franchise that I actually genuinely loved. I loved that they explained the whole thing with Monami and, uh, and Gekko Gekko Haro. Such an awesome thing, honestly. I, I really did like that part a lot. It was pretty sad when they revealed that she was, you know, fucking dead. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I like, I like the, that whole thing, but honestly, the character itself, Yusami slash Monami, Eh, like, eh, what, really? <laughs> Not really much to like about her, you know, she's kind of annoying for a long time, and then, you know, you just get the, uh, chapter 5, when she gets executed along with, um, with Chiaki. I don't know, a character that, you know, you start off and you're just like, eh, this character's alright. Oh, but, okay, okay, so I was just gonna give her, a, I was just gonna be kinda knighted with her overall, because honestly, I don't like the character, I'll just tell you straight up, but... But, there's no way we cannot give Monami this. She has the best goddamn theme song. The best goddamn theme song. I I would even argue one of the best songs of the entire Dog and Rampa soundtrack. Like, 100%. Her damn theme song is so fucking awesome. Like, I can't even put into words how awesome her theme song is. Every, ting, every single time that it comes on and you hear that fucking robotic voice in the back, you're just like, yes, yes, come on, give it to me. I want to listen to this song more. It's like, it's like Sticks Helix at the end of ReZero, it starts coming on, and you're just like, yes, please play it, I love it, man, I, I absolutely love it, it's such an awesome theme song. <laughs> okay, so, the great for you, Sami slash Monami, I don't like the character at all, I would give her a C tier, but... The, her awesome theme song, honestly, is gonna give her a full grade higher, she is going up to a B pl to a B a, yeah, let's go with a B, a straight B. I was gonna say B minus, but her theme song just kills, man. It's to the point where every single time Monami shows up, you're just like, I don't even care that I don't like this character, because I'm just too busy jamming out to this fucking song, dude. So yeah, Yusami slash Monami's gonna get a B tier just for her awesome fucking song. So, there you go. Alright, now you would think this would be the end of the video, because obviously I'm not gonna re-rank Junko, why the fuck would I do that? But, we do still have Izuru Kamakura to rank, and we're gonna rank him in the same way I did Mukuro Ikusaba from the first video, where we're gonna rank him in the grand scheme of things, so the Despair arc as well as Dagunapa 2 Goodbye Despair. Look, he is a very boring character. <laughs> I had to do that. But I do genuinely think he's a boring character. There's really not nothing to really latch on to about Izuru Kamakura. Um, although he brings out some um he is the reason we get a lot of really great Jugo moments. You 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 know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> Your user come core, 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 your user come so yeah, he lends you a lot of really great moments, uh, thanks to, I mean, that, that's mainly Junko being awesome, because, you know, we all know Junko's fucking awesome. Um, but, you know, because he is the reason we get those moments, so I guess I gotta give him some credit, but overall, he's not that memorable. He, he's not, yeah. aside from giving us some pretty great Junko lines, I don't know, he, whatever. <laughs> what the fuck ever, dude? I, I got nothing on him. Like, it, it's kind of a cool plot twist at the end when they reveal that Hajime Hinata was Izuru Kamakura. I do like it, but eh, what, whatever, <laughs> whatever, man. He's just, he's just a, he's just a very boring character. That's another thing I hate about him too, man. That got really old really fast. That whole boring, it's all so boring. This whole world, all this despair, so boring. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give him a B for boring. <laughs> Alrighty, there we have it, everybody. Alrighty, so I'm recording this later because I completely forgot to rank the ultimate imposter, so it's gonna be a bit of a, a an anticlimactic ending, because instead of ending on Izuru Kamakura like I had planned, I forgot about the ultimate imposter, because of course I did, he's very forgettable, you know, he's the first person to die in this game, and he's basically just Byakuya, but... I do think he's got some pretty good moments in uh, in the Despair arc. We get some development with him in the Despair arc, and so for that reason, like the whole thing with him and uh, in the Ultimate Animator, what was his name? What was his name? Hang on, don't tell me. Hang on, hang on. I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking remember it. Ryota Mitarai, that's his name. Ryota Mitarai. The whole thing with him and the old and uh, Ryota, I, I like him overall. He had some so yeah he he became a much more interesting character in the Despair arc. So yeah, not a not a terrible character. I'll go ahead and give him like a we'll go with a a B tier for him, because, I mean, overall, he really is just like Byakuya in the first chapter, and then he dies, so there's not much really there, but in the Despair arc, he does get some time to shine a little bit more, so I'm gonna give Ultimate uh, Imposter a B tier, but that
there you have it, everybody. That is the actual ending of the uh, of the of the video. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of the video in the comment section down below. Leave your favorite Don and Rapa goodbye despair character in the in the comment section down below. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you love Don and Rapa as much as me, stay tuned because next week you will be getting the V3 cast ranking, which should be the most fun one because that happens to be my favorite cast as well as my favorite Don and Rapa game. So there you have it, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and this is DK Gozine signing out.